Okay, well, the assembly process of the coin purse, as usual, center line of your zipper, pull in half, and you'll find the center. As you can see, it's marked there in that dark, and the center line of coin purse, top and bottom, left and right, whatever you you like seeing. But this will be a quick because it's already been done. Before, I mean, this would be kind of like an update assembly thing, so it's gonna be bits and pieces so through the center to the back. I just kind of make a little loop here and there on it just so it ensures a knot doesn't come out. And I never go through the center of it, and I go to the front, or if I start assembling the zipper. Make sure they're both lined up and put together. And just shoot through the center there this time. Be sure that you catch the edge of your coin purse. Boom, zipper. Well, not too much of the edge, but enough for it to catch on and hold. So you see, it's about that much holding on. I have a lot of stuff on my desk and it is catching on to everything. So pulled, hold in, go through and repeat. Make sure you make sure you're sewing close to your zipper. Nice very your bead work. Just so it leaves enough for the edge the edging to be looped around this section here. Just a little extra section and go quarter inch and just work your way around. Just adjust your zipper until you feel that it's good enough to catch or to hold and you work your way around. I mean, I'm gonna do that and work way around, do both sides, and I'll be back. Okay, when you get down to your end, remember to stop before you get to the bottom and do your back stitch onto it and keep your stitching close as possible. You need to probably angle your needle here and there a bit. And mine tends to get caught on my zipper, extra zipper. But just go through and go, like I said, back through the same portion and keep it close as possible. So you may have to angle it down towards the beadwork when you're doing this. So angle, when you're going through here, kind of go up on the side, go down. It's kind of a back and forth weaving. This gets caught. And your zipper orientation basically up to you what side you want to open and close from. So there it is. So you see, it's making that stitch in the back. Thumbs are going quite fast. And just like that. You will have your zipper portion. Now it's secure and it won't pull out, come out, it's double stitched. And it looks nice. I mean, you can come back around and just come straight up across and redo it again. But your preference, up to you. But that's zipper portion real fast. Okay, so I attach the zipper all around. It looks good. It zips up perfectly. As you can see, well, that one's tucked in, but it works. Looks nice. So now the lining. It's on my other video how it's done, but here it is. Some pretty buckskin. I don't use leather. I always use buckskin because, well, I use canvas as well, but... That's if I'm adding po pockets. Just do, like I say, know your measurements from here to here. Mine's four, and a, four inches wide by seven and a half wide, because these are three and a half tall. It's just shy by a quarter. But just go, just when I went shorts by half inch. 
So I'm gonna put it there and it's having it short to here. So it's a pull up. So it leaves a little area at the bottom. Like I said, for the zipper to tuck under and it won't be seen on the inside. But before I do any of that, this is still flimsy and this is still flimsy. And what we actually want is something that's solid like this. It's not flimsy. And it's solid. So the way I achieved that is my fancy for sale sign. So it's got the same size. It's just I measure it to this line here. So your template. You just get measured, same angle, and you just go above your line here. So mine's this green line here, and I mark it. And I just make it to that shape, just so it's above here, so it has that nice rounded corner. It's not have that hard edge. And then I cut it in half. So you do the width. Then I mark it, both sides roughly an eighth of an inch. So then it gives me the so when I sew the buckskin onto or the lining buckskin lining in. I'm not sewn into this plastic. So just like that. Turn it over. Fits here. I'm going to leave enough spacing around it so I can run my needle through it. And like so is how I glue it down. I can't find my glue right now. Well, actually I can. So I use, like I said, E6000 glue. Oh, before I do all this, I got to make sure everything works right. So... If I glue this together and I start putting it in, if I didn't measure this part here, as you can see, I'm shy by an inch. I try to keep it bigger than an inch in the middle since I did it to here. To the dot line edge, I actually got to take more off the middle to make it work. So it's roughly the width of my scissors, and they're quite wide. Do it to both sides and give me that extra one inch gap for the center. This is as long as your gap for where the fold is is bigger than one inch. Like I say it's one to quarter, one and a quarter here, so that works. And then you can start gluing. But actually this side's kind of short. Decided to be cut a little more. Measure, measure twice, cut once. If it don't look right, measure again. <laughs> so good enough. And then glue. There's only a section that I use glue on, like I said on my other videos, but I'm just showing again because. Some of you guys might not see my other videos on how I've done this. Just place it ever so lightly. Do it again. Yeah, it looks like I'm going crazy with the glue, but it's okay. And just set it. Make sure you have your spacing all the way right around it. Because you got to do spacing for your stitching. And just press it down. Leave it 5-10 minutes, 24 hours. Whatever you feel comfortable with. And then we can attach it to the inside. Which will be in my next step when I do this process again. So just cut to the next part. 
Boom. Okay, we're back with this thing again. So we're doing lining. It's all dry and ready and it's not flimsy. But as usual, I got my Glover needle, our buckskin needle, our leather leather needle. Start in the center, roughly. I usually start from the inside because it hides all my knots and everything. Then go through the center. Well, this part gets a little difficult because you're going through leather. And depending on the thickness of your leather on the inside or what we're using, well, degree, the, I guess the variations of difficulty would apply to that. So it's a buckskin, so it's quite hard to beat through. I'd beat with a downward motion. Kind of this catches the edge of the buckskin. It may take a few tries to get this right. Oh, hold on. I got a needle. Look at my Not in my thing. Copy that. Okay, I got to sort it sorted out. So, basically, what you can do is push it up as high as you can, go through it back, and angle down and push through. So, as you can see, it does work. I have a <clears throat> new clever. Excuse my voice. <coughs> I was with my son shocking me last night, and I kind of did a little more yelling than I should have, but well worth it. Okay, so you want to go through and kind of work your way through your buckskin in, or your lining material in, and your edge of your beadwork. I just see I'm getting quite close to that. And just working my way around and having a little spot for it to hold on to. And we'll do this around it by half inch to a quarter to half inch around whatever you feel that is necessary to do for your piece. Or even the distance inside is up to you as well. Just as long as you get close to your beadwork there. Probably me, I kind of go about, I don't know, about the 16th, 16th apart, just to keep my, oh, check out myself there. Well, I'll see, I go about a half inch part on mine, come through, go down, and roughly, like I said, 16th of an inch, just enough to catch it, but go through and get close to my beadwork. So I'm gonna do it all around, go down to here, cut it, and just do the rest of it. So I'll come back when I complete it so you can see how it looks. So I got done doing the whole lining, get all sewn in, all around, even this side. I did a little portion of the side here. I got a little ahead of myself, but basically what I do is I cut the ends off, the excess, Zipper portions, and I trim it down to fit underneath the bead edge and the and the lining. There's a little space in between there to fit. This is why you cut the lining a little shorter, just for it to fit under and have that inside. So you don't see that zipper. I mean, all you do is get it, cut it, burn it in. And I sewed mine because I don't have those little metal um, clamps for the zipper. So I just sew mine. I have an awl here so I can push my zipper back inside it and tuck it in. Push it to where it needs it to be. So push it back so it looks fairly nice and just zip it shut now there's a little bug in that side but it's fine 
then once that looks right and has set yeah. my needle is still attached but still you just want to run your needle around the edge until you just about get to center this is kind of a quick quick video on how to do this and then just go to the zipper I mean, you gotta go to the zipper and uh, miss your lining on the inside. And just push through, it'll catch it. You wanna do about three, four times per side. So, here's what I'm gonna do real fast. You can put your thumb on the inside and pull your lining back to you as well while you're doing this. And just run it through. And be sure to go close to your beadwork as you can. And just come back to the center so you can go across the zipper. is quite quite challenging you can uh, one last side it's hard to do because it is all sewn together put together and this is like the last stitch that goes into it so everything wants to catch get caught but this takes a little time and practice to get it right. I mean, you'll know when you miss or gone too high because if you go too high, you'll see the needle sticking through. You know, obviously, if you go through your buckskin, it's not going to want to go through because it's enough have resistance to push back. And it sees going through the buckskin, so I need to push through, angle a little different for it to fit. Actually, that one through the box kind of sell. So as we're pulling that box skin down, or the lining down, does help. Oh. I went to the side. So this is the last stitch. Oh, it seems so easy when you're not filming. I don't know, I guess it's the stress of recording yourself and trying to do everything perfect on the first try, but nothing goes as planned, especially in beating and teaching. But you do what you do and you get through it. So that's it. It's all sewn in, zippers down. So when you close it and you tug on it, it's easy. It's tied down here. Or sewn down here, sewn on the side, sewn up. And like that. And as a square bottom. And that's basically your zipper. I mean, it has a little bulge there, but it'll work itself out later. But that's basically it. I mean, all I do here is sew it through a few times, through the edge. I don't want to put knots in these. So it's kind of go up one direction a few times and come back and do the kind of a back stitch on itself. So I'll make like a figure eight or a few loops on itself. Just so no one's not gonna work its way out. And I normally cut it on the inside close to it. Just like that. Because all this will be covered up with beadwork once I get the next portion, next step. Will be the doing the edge of this. Beating the edge. So it does look tight on this, but there's a little space for the beads to go around.
as you can see. And I did it purposely it's because it's the only way I know that I can do it. Most people, they do so like really close to it, but I like having the loop around and have my beads sit nicely and flush against things. So as you can see, it's very close on this piece. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do this part next, my next video, how to do edge the uh, coin purse. So stay tuned.